So I, there's a place here for the handset, so I'm putting that towards the back. Okay, so now we're gonna put the mount on and um, you probably wanna, to avoid bending these screws, you probably wanna back those way out. So the front of the mount, that gap in the screws here is gonna go right there. So, now as you tighten this up, so see here, this piece is loose, that's this one, and then this one's tight. As you tighten up this bottom one, you want to keep kicking those legs out to make sure they're out as far as they can go, and they're not going to shift once you're in the middle of your session. So I keep kicking those legs out. Yeah. Okay, so then both of these are tight. And I'm not sure how level this is <laughs> compared to the top there. Um, sometimes I use that Obviously, that's a big difference in what we had up here, but let's go with this one because that's where the, the mount is. So. Okay, and then the altitude adjustment here is already set for my latitude but we'll be adjusting that when we do polar alignment. Same thing with these guys, the azimuth knobs. We'll be adjusting those when we do polar alignment. But for now, we just want this to be pointing true north. So now we're gonna switch to the other level. So this is my, it's adjusted already, but I'm gonna loosen it so you can see. This is my RA. So what I'm doing now is setting this for a, a home position, which is RA. Here's my counterweight. And then what we can do is Move the deck. Where's my deck? Is up here. There's a couple, you know, different ways you could do this. So that's 90 degrees off from where we want to be. So what you do here is then set this setting circle to 90, tighten it down, and then when we move the deck back to zero, there's the home position. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put the counterweights on. Here's the toe saver. You just have it like this the mounts fall off and land on your toe that's why this is the toe saver Mount, uh, weights I should say okay so I'm gonna need a couple counterweights here Put the toe saver back on Okay, and we'll adjust the position of these in a minute when we get everything 
on the mount. Let's put the scope on. This is a Vixen style dove plate. That one over there is a that's you see is wider. It's a Los Mandy D style. It's a lot wider. Now exactly where we're gonna put this this way we'll adjust again when we get everything on there and balance the scope. So let me talk about this scope for a minute. It's the six inch version of that scope, uh, eight inch RC Richie Crichton. These are made by, I believe it's a Taiwanese company. So they come in different flavors. Uh, GC or GSO, TPO, uh, Astrotech, Orion, they're all the same, made by the same manufacturer. The only thing that differs is, uh, oh, also Allen Cam has them now too. Um, the only thing that differs is, is, is there one or two dove plates and what the dove plate styles are and, you know, what, what other hardware you get around it. But the scope itself and the focuser and these extension tubes are, are pretty much the same. So, so what makes this an astrograph? Well, the Ritchie Crichton refers to the optical design. So it's got two hyperbolic mirrors, a hyperbolic shaped mirror at the primary, and then one up here at the secondary. And that's the same optical design as the space shuttle, and it's the same optical design as most modern telescopes after Palomar. So what what makes this an astrograph? Large secondary mirror, which means it's not so great for planetary, but good for um, astrophotography. You see all these, hopefully you can see down in here, all these uh, knife edge ridges going down. Um, they're here in the primary tube. They're also in the kind of hard to see. They're in the secondary tube as well. Um, so that's a, a feature of an astrograph to uh, make things uh, sharp and, and crisp and avoid off uh, light coming in off axis and causing reflections and shadows and whatnot. So the way this works is the Light comes in, bounces off the primary, comes up, bounces off the secondary, goes through a tube, and down here to your, comes out down here to your camera. So it passes through here three times, and that's why these are pretty, the light passes through three times, so that's why these are pretty compact. You know, obviously this isn't a, a meter focal, you know, a meter in distance, but the, the focal length of this is actually over a meter because of the, you know, three times the light passes through there. All right. So we got the scope on there, so let's add the camera. Um, these scopes have these, another feature that makes it an astrograph is these extension rings here because depending on whether you're using focal reducers or barlows or whatever uh, filter wheels and the spacing between all of those between here and your camera is going to affect where this thing comes to focus so for visual you know it's actually going to come to focus with even with uh, a um, diagonal you know it's going to come to focus like way out here but then if you start using focal reduction and all that stuff it's it, it might even come to focus you know way up here or up here so you'll have to remove one or more of these to achieve focus yeah. just tighten this stuff up here So 
this is a two inch focuser, 10 speed, although I almost never use the, the fine speed. Um, all right, let's put the camera on. So this is taking out the one inch adapter that I also use as a, as a dust cap. So in the simplest case here, we have just a nose piece. So got a nose piece that goes from a T-ring, T-size threads to two inch, which is 48 millimeters. So that goes on there. That's a Canon T-ring. And then we could put uh, a light pollution filter on here, two inch light pollution filter or whatever filter we wanted to. Here's the camera. This is a stock T3i. The other camera that's buried over there in the, all the water cooling and stuff is a Hypercam modified full spectrum T3i. This one's stock. Um, I'd like to have a second astro camera so maybe I'll get this one modified or get get a different camera that's astro modified so put that on there and one thing somebody taught me I think it might have been in the Orion store was I always put that strap over something so worst case scenario camera falls out it just hangs from the strap so that's cheap insurance so we like that so just pop that in there and tighten it down and now we're ready for the wiring harness again this is kind of way overkill for 